I think we agnostics is an is an uh, unsuspected resource. Yeah, that's a great chapter. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I was going talking to somebody the other day about how many times it said, you know, like it says he thought he was an atheist. You know how many times it says thought, thought, only thought he lost his egotism and fear. He only thought, you know, like it's all in the uh, head. It's uh, all in the head, you know. Well, yes, uh, you are, you know, you become an R that you think, you know, <laughs> yeah. seemingly, yeah. How do you get to know yourself? Usually through thought. Isn't that insane? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Problem resides in the head. Yeah. Hey, all right, hon. See you. Well, the whole collapse of thought, right? <laughs> That's the way you get it's to Not even thought that. again. It's the mind of the thought. Yeah. The mind of the thought gives meaning to whatever you think about yes mm. so i wish everyone here to have a lot of money but i don't want any of you to have any of my money <laughs> just put my in front of anything and it changes the meaning of it yeah i remember you talking about that when i first first uh came on that was huge that was yeah we were talking about that 34 years 33 years ago <laughs> that was our <laughs> you do a thing at the at the uh live meetings of put money health relationships and everyone gets triggered by seeing those words and then we're going to change the meaning of the word without changing any letter of it anything not yeah. capitalizing it not italicing it nothing just my money my relationships my health yeah it's completely different yeah well yeah. Playing the role of my, <laughs> literally, who is what's playing the role of my. So if something in every topic we run into in this world is given meaning to it, yeah? So the meaning, what is the meaning of pain? For many of us, it's suffering, yeah? So pain triggers a meaning given to it, which is um, this is going to last forever or whatever, and then suffering ensues. Yeah. And most people are really suffering from suffering more than the pain. Yeah. Because yeah. of the meaning given to it. This is, this isn't like a rare phenomenon. This is how it works. <laughs> we represent a lot of things going on and where we are is what, what the meaning that's going to be given to that, what comes after. So, yeah. Thoughts, my thoughts, feelings, my feelings are completely different. Resentment, my resentment. How long can a resentment last out in the wild? Not that long. <laughs> On Highway 101, if you don't act out immediately, it may be three turnoffs and then you fucking forgot about it and you're resenting someone else. Yeah. yeah. But when it's called your resentment, it can last for 60 years. You mm -hmm. feel it. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. You domesticate it, and you it be, now it becomes yours, and you become its. Yeah. Do you have a resentment, or does resentment have you? Yeah, that's a, yeah. Yes, these things are interesting to look at, because this is before, and the before has a huge influence on that which is after. And many of us are just trying to manage and control the after. Mm. Not realizing that the before is giving all the meaning the after has. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you, if what you call you changes, how you see things will change. Yeah. Instead of wishing things will change the way you see them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just simple. Well, it's interesting. Do you remember Jonathan when he came on and we had that meeting and Jonathan talked about, you know, asking to be relieved of the bondage of self and then he realized. Yes. Yeah, that was that was really good. And yes, he was in the condition. So yeah. him constantly asking to be brought to that condition was a denial of being in the condition. This doesn't <laughs> yeah. this isn't rare either. It happens all the time. Yeah. People are 
sober, but they don't think they're sober. Yeah. The, the head doesn't think they're sober, so they're not really resting in sobriety. Mm -hmm. They're on a precipice every minute, yet they're sober. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so, that, was a, that was a very revelatory meeting. For, yeah. yeah, well, every one of them can be, because as it says, someone brought it up the other day, this power is constantly revealing us. Mm -hmm. Constantly means all the time, yes? Mm -hmm. So this thing is like a, it's like an open spigot. It's not like a, a stagnant pond. <laughs> it's a flow that's moving through all of us. Yeah. A lot of what it's moving through is unnoticed because we're up the ass of self. <laughs> when you get pulled out of the ass of self, you start noticing more of the downloads. That's true, yes. Yeah, but it's been, it, this power is constantly revealing to us more. Mm -hmm. I feel most of the, what it reveals is what I'm not, yeah? So right. Right. The, the self cannot get away with murder under the cloth that I'm the doer of whatever happens through me. I'm not a believer in that. Mm -hmm. I believe something takes us over and uses us to express itself. And we get, we get left holding the bag. Yeah. yeah. Now, if you don't want to touch the sanctimoniousness of being a personal doer, but at least you can admit that you've been driven, which excludes you from being the driver. Mm. Yes. Yep. At the same moment, you can't be the driver and the driven. You cannot. And they're describing us as the driven in the big book, mm -hmm. driven by a hundred forms of fear and all this shit. That doesn't sound like the driver to me. <laughs> so in, in that case, what's the driver? If you're the driven, what's driving you? Yeah, the and then he says there's only two possibilities, self or the infinite, really. Yeah. You're trusting finite self as the driver, and you're being driven by that, or you're trusting the infinite as the driver, and you're driven by that. Mm -hmm. And... You will judge the tree by its fruits. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I love your metaphors. Well, if you if you've only been driven by self, and it's the only God that you've ever been introduced to, because it's playing God all day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. That limits the possibility. But if you can see there is possibly a better way or a different way, which this is what AA offers, which is instead of trusting finite self, you can actually be brought into a condition where you're trusting the infinite. Yeah. Yeah. And it says that you'll be placed in a position of neutrality. The problem will not exist for you anymore. These are something took you and put you in a new condition. And I believe how that is assisted is the way of life we're, we're offered yes yeah yeah and yet at a point where you're praying all the time to be relieved of the bondage of self you may see you are relieved of the bondage of self yeah yeah and that's the new basis you're on mm -hmm. i am not on the old basis trying to be sincerely interested in a new basis right that part of the operation is done <laughs> i'm on an i'm on the new basis is the only basis, really. Yeah. You know. Yes? Yeah, I agree. So many of us in the Zooms yeah. are there. We're yeah. already, we have been given so much more we could have ever expected by this way of life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, already. I mean, it's, uh, it's not like we're still waiting for it to come. Recovery <laughs> produces the goods. <laughs> it does. Yeah. 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 So, all right, you want to go, get going? Yeah, let me, uh, all right, all right. Welcome, everybody. Uh, let me get this. Hold on one second. Welcome, my name's Kurt Zimmerman. I'm an alcoholic. Uh, we're glad you're here. Just a few things uh, before we start. This is not an AA meeting. It's Paul H's reflections on the exact nature of the wrong as described on page 64 of the AA Big Book and the solution found in the 12 steps. The meeting is being recorded. It'll be up on YouTube here in a couple of days. And uh, I don't know, we're not streaming on Facebook anymore. 
Also, remember, this is not an all share meeting uh, question and answers. Uh, for Paul H's take on the topic or the, the steps we're talking about. For details on Paul's events, story under arrest, books, those fabulous elusive t-shirts, past events, videos, check out his website, uh, zenbitchlab.com. So let's get things out of the way. Um, what I got is uh, page 50, you guys. Um, let me get you back up here. All right, here we go. <clears throat> Middle of the page. On one proposition, however, these men and women are strikingly agreed. Every one of them has gained access to and believes in a power greater than himself. This power has in each case accomplished the miraculous, the humanly impossible. As a celebrated American statesman put it, let's look at the record. Here are thousands of men and women, worldly indeed, they flatly declare that since they have come to believe in a power greater than themselves, to take a certain attitude toward that power and to do certain simple things, there has been a revolutionary change in their way of living and thinking. In the face of collapse and despair, in the face of the total failure of their human resources, they found that a new power, peace, happiness, and sense of direction flowed into them. This happened soon after they wholeheartedly met a few simple requirements. Once confused and baffled by the seeming futility of existence, they show the underlying reasons why they were making a heavy going of life. Leaving aside the drink question, they tell why living was so unsatisfactory. They show how the change came over them when many hundreds of people are able to say that the consciousness of the presence of God is today the most important fact of their lives. They present a powerful reason why one should have faith. So right there, we'll stop it. I really like that reading. Yes, yes. Well, you know, I feel in the big book, they really bend over backwards to allow everyone or anyone to get in under the tent because they have such faith that if you get in, you're going to get results. Yeah. It's this idea of uh, uh, either sublime or educated or ignorant contempt prior to investigation that causes uh almost like a disability in us to open up to new ideas. So here he is, he's basically saying the proof is in the pudding. Thousands of people have come in with a lot of prejudice maybe about God or whatever, you just call it presence. And yet, yet putting that aside and just taking these simple suggestions, they stayed sober and all these um, remarkable things started to flood into their lives. Yeah. Now, a big example I had when I came in, in San Francisco, some sponsors there would ha have you write down when you came in what, what you would hope for after a year of sobriety. And then if you stayed sober a year, they'd bring out that little letter that you wrote and you would see how small and myopic your view was because that year life had given you so, so, so much more. Yeah. And it was a very eye opener because I'm looking through a very myopic view and after years of active addiction, it was truly myopic, <clears throat> a very myopic self-centered view, which was limiting any possibility of ever being free from it, but constantly producing hope about being free as it, which is also a form of bondage of self. Yeah. So uh, they believed that they could just get you in the door, the results would show up. Yeah. But most people say no before they investigate. Yeah. Some people I know, they went to, they walked into a meeting halfway through sat there for five minutes left, and now they, con they are convinced they know what AA is. Yeah, really. 
like everyone they heard in those five minutes was the speaker for AA and all like this. And now when they're totally fucked, they won't go to AA because they think they know what it is. Yeah. So this is the head. This is where we're, what we're dealing with because the head is where the problem resides and the head is what we're mostly listening to. Yes. And this is where the statement in the book about you got to quit playing God, that's where the playing God is going on, is the head, eh? When you woke up this morning and something in your head told you how the day was going to be, isn't that playing God? You have no idea how the day's going to be, but it already says how the day's going to be. Don't fucking get up, you know, da 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 there's a whole lot of playing God. Yeah. Now, if you ever meet God, it's not playing God. It's being God. Yeah. And the being God feels a whole lot different than that which is playing God. Yeah. The being God doesn't talk to me ad nauseum, trying to convince me to do something that's not in my best interest. <laughs> but the playing God does. So I see the playing God as something foreign to us. And that noticing it as foreign to me allowed me to entertain a new idea, which is I can be free from it, not as it anymore. And this has worked for 30 something years. Uh, my basis isn't, I'm not in the process of, of becoming free as self, I'm in the process and past the process of being free from self. <laughs> that to me is the key. And the freedom from self is a loss of interest in self. Yeah. You just don't give a shit about it a lot of the time. Yeah. <laughs> when it says go left, you just keep going straight. <laughs> when it says you really blew it, you just keep doing it. Yeah. It's just on and on. So, uh, your life isn't based on the narrative. Your life is based on the living of it. Yeah, it's quite different. And then you get, you still have the narrative playing. Hopefully it sounds like it's in a back room, not like a fucking loudspeaker. And this is, I think, what the program does. The program triggers a loss of interest in self. And therefore, when it's presenting its master plan, you don't hear it as clearly as you used to because it's not right in your ear anymore. You're more interested in what you can contribute to life and what you can do for the next person or the other person who's suffering and all that stuff. Yeah? Yeah. So let me get back to the reading. So ba 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 ba. This happened soon after they, they wholeheartedly met a few simple requirements. Yeah, yeah. The idea of the relationship to with the power is we are get, we are its children. It is the that we're going to be directed. It's the director. That's the attitude towards the the power and stuff. So here, the last one, which is that the consciousness of the presence of God is today the most important factor of their lives where before the most important fact was the presence of themselves, yes? We were incredibly self-conscious at the expense of the presence, yeah? So when Paul is filling up the presence, I'm basically out to lunch, so to speak. So losing interest in Paul produces a, a strength in the conscious presence of that power, yes? But when I'm super, super absorbed in the lower power, I become seemingly unconscious to that unsuspected inner resource. That power beyond all powers goes unnoticed when this little power is playing God, yeah? And perhaps there's a better way. What is that better way? Instead of trusting finite self or trusting that which is playing God, we trust the infinite. And maybe you want to call it God. I don't care. Yeah. But it, let's say it's the infinite, whatever that means. Yeah. 
but it's definitely not what you used to rely on. That's all. And what's going to pro produce that transition and support that transition or migration of interest from self to the infinite, the program of AA, of AA. That's what it's built for. Yeah. That's why we have, what church has 600 meetings a week? What church in the world has 600 meetings a week? You come to San Francisco, it's probably more now. In the heyday, it had over 600 meetings a week. From 12 in, at night to 5 in the morning. <laughs> I mean, they basically covered like 21 hours of the day. You could go to a meeting. Yeah. They gave you at least three hours to sleep. And then basically all the support. And I know so many people who entered AA and that their whole life after entering AA is based on AA. The, the person who sold them their house was an AA person. The dentist is an AA person. Yes, their kids are going to school with AA. You know, it's just all over the place, the effect. Yeah, so. Yeah, and with Zoom, it's even more, right? I mean. <laughs> Zoom, yes. But the thing is, let's get clear. Maybe it is. I'm hoping. We, I hope we become obsolete this meeting. I do. I hope it becomes an obvious plank in the presentation of this, our program, that the problem, the nature of the problem is foreign to us. It's as if you've had a long lasting flu that you've come to know it as you, yeah? And you're always just dealing with the symptoms, never the real disease, because you think the disease is you. Yeah. And so all of its symptoms that it keeps ex exhibiting, we just try to manage better or control them or less harm. But there is a possibility of being free from it because it's not of you. Yeah. What you did while under the influence, you need to be accountable for, it, but you are not responsible for it. You were driven because if you were, it's so weird that you did the exact same thing most every other addict and alcoholic has done. Yes? Would you think if it was you, there would be some kind of fucking uniqueness? But we're all run-of-the-mill addicts and alcoholics. Yeah? If you go to a meeting and listen, doesn't it sound like the people have your thoughts? and your feelings, and did the shit that you did, obviously, after you get over the stubbornness of self-centeredness, you're going to see, how could they be my thoughts if everyone has them? Yes? So we have been taken over by a, a mental activity, which is finite in nature and foreign in nature to us, that doesn't have an infinite amount of traits. When it takes over a host, it demonstrates the same fucking manifestations. Yeah? Every host demonstrates the same fucking illness because it's not the host. It's the parasite. Yeah? We can't be free from the host if we're the host. We can be free from the parasite if we're the host. Yes? The host cannot be freed from the host. It's the host. But it can be freed from the parasite. But the parasite is talking to us as if it's the host. And we're living as if it's the host. Yeah? Pronouncing every day, I'm this and I'm that and I'm that, da, 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 da. Yeah? A lot of people get concerned about it. They don't want to say I'm an alcoholic anymore. So then they want to leave. No, just say I'm a, I'm a grateful member of recovery. You don't have to fucking leave. Yeah. If you're afraid that saying I'm an alcoholic is putting you in a condition that you don't want to be in, just say, greet, you know, say something different. I'm a grateful member of recovery. Yeah. That will pass. Everyone in the meeting isn't going to stop and look at you with fucking great suspicion. <laughs> yes, you, can, you just, you'll blend right in. It doesn't freaking matter. No, I've got to leave. <laughs> it's just crazy. 
Yeah. <laughs> what is what is the point of relief from the bondage of self other than to be an example to others that there's a possibility of relief from the bondage of self? Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, all right. There's a great reading. I don't know if we should keep going though. That was good. That was good. Proof is in the pudding. Yeah. <laughs> if you do what we do, you're going to get what we get. Yeah. 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 yeah what a gift. It says we got to get to the exact nature of the wrong. What is it to you? Do you mm -hmm. think a part of you is what's defeating you? Well, if you do, that part of you thinks it's all of you. What are you going to do with that? Yeah. Make a mess. <laughs> <laughs> How many people have you ever seen the statement in the A big book, self can't get out of self? No, because it came from hundreds of thousands of people trying to live from that book, and they realized something, that self can't get out of self because they found that was exactly what was happening, yeah? That which they were bound to was trying to get out of the bondage. That is another form of bondage called the bondage of self, yeah? This is what happens when the parasite and the host identities are not clear, yeah? The host is so mixed up with the parasite, he can't tell the difference. Yeah. Yeah. And so we want to be clear about the exact nature of the wrong and look at its manifestations and stop calling them our manifestation. Yeah. So when you talk about your resentment, pull yourself up and say, is they, are they really my resentments or are they manifestations of self in my life? I would say the latter is clearer than the first. Yeah. And if you keep wishing for something to go, yet keep owning it, it's probably not going to leave. <laughs> really? It's sort of like trying to tell the dog to run away and then keep whistling it back by going my resentment. The dog is going to be fucking confused. Yeah. I want to be rid of these resentments. My resentment. Oh, oh, 50 years I've been coddling it milking it like the golden calf my it's been the excuse for all my failures in life i'm not going to give that fucker up yeah what's killing you a resentment or your resentment your resentment i don't think it's fucking that outlandish it's right out of the book i mean it's a simple description most of us grew up in english how you can you believe that in the sentence, being convinced self manifested in various ways is what has defeated us, that somehow us and self mean the same thing. I just don't see it in the English language. It doesn't, yeah. So self is what has defeated us. How? Through its manifestations. What are its common manifestations? Resentment, fear harming other people in the pursuit of what we want. So we look at the sexual arena. Yeah. So we do like that. We do the froth on the drink. We look at the froth, resentment, fear, and this. Yeah. To see what? To see how self has defeated us. Not to see how, how many resentments I have and how much fear I'm in. No. To see that the fear is based on an occupation by self. Yes. It's the atmosphere it breathes. So if it wants to live in this little Petri dish, it changes the fucking composition. It makes it fucking poisonous. It likes it. It likes grievance. It likes this and hate and shit. Yes? And if you keep owning it, it's just growing and growing and growing. I know people, look at, remember the clampets and... Uh, American folklore, them and another family had a vendetta for like four generations. What the fuck? Their whole identity was based on hating the other. <laughs> this is insane. Yeah. A resentment is a resentment. It usually triggers an, 
and anger. And if you don't have a gun near you, probably, you probably won't fucking go to jail. You will just feel a little uncomfortable. And maybe that anger you have about someone in a meeting will motivate you to start a new meeting. So that anger is being put to great use. Yes. And fear. Do you believe it's fear? Literally, do you? It's mental anxiety. It's faith in the mental anxiety. It's faith in the thoughts that produce a mental anxiety that mimics a lot of the attributes of fear. But very rarely, in my case, did it ever trigger adrenaline being dropped. Yeah. Now, some people in panic attacks, it does. But in my case, I remember I met a shark in the water once surfing in Australia. And I mean, the fear, first of all, it came with a soundtrack and it was Jaws, that movie. <laughs> and then there was a huge download of adrenaline and I couldn't swim for, you know, compared to a shark, but I got out of the water and I was just drenched rushing out with the adrenaline. Yeah. Most mental anxiety can't produce that effect, but it does produce a low level anxiety or fear. Yeah, that hovers around all day. Yes, that's not fear, that's mental anxiety. Fear is when you see a shark in the water. Mental anxiety is you're imagining the shark in the water. Yeah. Ugh, well. Well, you know what you, you one of the reasons I picked this reading was this and, and I, because I think it's what you talk about in all the meetings is says once confused and baffled by the seeming futility of existence. I think I think that this exactly what you're talking about addresses that, you know, like and I didn't know that I didn't know that, you know, uh, that's right. Yeah. Well, the whole thing of the parasite, it hides in without knowing. You'll see in a lot of the statements in the book, it starts with without knowing it. Just like it says, we're extreme versions of self-centered run wild, but we don't think so. Yeah. So there's this, there's this protective like smokescreen, the parasite triggers, yeah, to keep us in the dark about what's actually going on. That's why most people leave at the fourth step and the ninth step in the process. Why is that? Because you love to take inventories on everyone else you see. You do, don't you? I mean, seriously, you size anyone up you see, you size up to make them sort of neutered so to feel you know, secure and shit, your head does. Yet people, are, it's like pulling teeth to do an inventory when it's about you. Because the parasite does not want you to get to the fourth column. It doesn't want you to see your role in things because you're going to see its role in things. You are. And we're just hopefully, we're trying to assist that event by this platform, really. Yeah. 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 We're hoping that if you're here, you've either done or you're going to do a fourth step. And when you do it, and if you follow it the simple way they present it with the Joe and Charlie people, the four columns, that fourth column is where you finally see your role in things. Yeah. And why is that such an attribute of the, of the addictive nature that you don't ever see your role in things when you're out there? Yeah. It's like a built in blindness. Why is that? Aren't you curious about that? You're very clear on who fucked with you and what they did and what it hurt, but you're not clear about what you had to do with it at all. I don't think that's natural. I think that's manufactured. I think the parasite keeps the host from knowing what's going on. I do. Yeah. And so now most of us, we hit the fourth column and we take responsibility. And if you have ever been in the head of alcoholism, when you were a kid, didn't you think you were responsible for everything? I remember when my father got very ill and they sat me down to talk to me about it because it was going to affect my relationship with him. I was like six or seven years old. 
And they explained it very clearly to me. And they had Dr. Jan Quinto, the family doctor there. He explained it to me. But how it got translated was, what did I do to cause my father not to want to play with me? That's an inordinate sense of responsibility, isn't it? I think many of us suffered from an oversized responsibility and our pursuit for relief was to become irresponsible. And sometimes we found that irresponsibility by being bad or by getting loaded, yeah? And then that ran its course and we suffered all the consequences and all that. And then we're brought into recovery and we're brought back to responsibility again, yeah? And we do it. And now a lot of people, I feel, are afraid to give up that responsibility because they think it's like a way of bypassing their true role that they have to mea culpa for 50 years for what they did while they were under the influence. I would say get over that fucker, yeah? And just take a look at it and see what has defeated you's role in things and be accountable. I made all the amends I've made in this life, yes? Not the sorries, the amends, yeah? And you're not going to convince me that I was a doer of most of the shit that happened while I was under the influence. You're just never going to do it, yeah? So I want to see the accountability of this parasite as that which had defeated me in this life. I do not want to give it a free pass and take responsibility for all the shit it produced. I don't. Just like we're giving great gratitude to the higher power for all the lovely effects, but we're not giving any credit to the lower power for all our defeats. I think that as a weird fucking thing. Yes? We're so easily ready to be grateful for something doing for us what we can't do for ourselves. What about that which did through us that what we would never have done by ourselves? What about putting the accountability on that? We're all walking around with a weight of guilt and shame based on being driven by something. Yes? It's like the Toyota truck that was used to drive to the bank when it got robbed now has a complex. It's a bank robber. It's a fucking truck. Yeah? We were used by a parasite to do what it wanted. And yet we're still holding the bag on all of the fucking guilt and shame that it produced. Yes? I just can't believe we're putting up with that still. I just cannot believe it. So, yeah, that is the point, literally, here. When are you going to put that weight of the past down? Haven't you? Where is the statute of limitations in the head? Where? Even the, even the courts of New York, where I got arrested quite a lot, had a statute of limitations. I can't be arrested for a lot of the shit that I could have been arrested before because it's past the point, yeah? They just, okay, you got a free fucking slate, yeah? Where do you find that in your head? Where? You're being dragged into court, the mental court, about something you didn't do when you were 15 years old over and over again, and you're 56 right now. It's like 31 years of living in a probation. <laughs> That's insane. If your hands are handcuffed, what are they able to receive? Or what are they able to give if they're handcuffed? By the past. What are you going to be able to, to receive and what are you able to give if you're freaking handcuffed? And I've noticed no matter how much time you have, it doesn't, it's not the key. I hear people still being identified with what they did 40 years ago, and they've been sober 40 years. It's like being released from jail, but having an umbilical cord still back into the cell you were in. Yeah? It's like a leash. You can't go any you can't go any farther. You have a certain conditional freedom, but you're always tugged back by being the doer of shit that you had nothing to do with. 
I have not gone on my all fours on a rug looking for cocaine for 38 years. I have never even thought of going on my knees to look for cocaine in any rug. No matter what, oriental rug, shag rug, it doesn't matter. I have not been compelled to go on all fours and start looking for cocaine in any rug for 36 years. What compelled me to do that when I was out there? Me? Give me a break. How are you going to be forgiven but by shit that you're convinced you should never have done? How are you going to be forgiven for that? How? You'll be the last one forgiven. You'll forgive everyone else, but you'll still be fucking guilty. You'll still be living under a conviction. That's bondage of self. Yeah? This long arm from the past still has a stranglehold on us. Yeah, so. Hey, James had his hand up, Paul. Yes, James. Lebowski. Lebowski. I, I actually didn't. I was just vibing oh. so much, though, on what Paul was saying. I might have, oh. I think I was like, you know, doing. <laughs> oh, you yeah, thumbs up. Laughing, you know. <laughs> yeah, good scene. <laughs> Thank you very much. But I'm, I'm, I'm vibing on this meeting. It's awesome. Thank you. I just hold the space for you, Kurt. Back to you. <laughs> Thanks, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? Comments? Conviction? You know what, Kurt? You know what yes. happens a lot? This is reflections on the 12 steps. It's better not be said with the preceding, it's Paul Hedeman's thing. Because Paul Hedeman is an outdoor to being invited to this meeting. Yeah. 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 Because we'll look for any fucking reason not to hear something. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, I was reading the old format, so I'll I'll ixnay that. Yeah. The idea of Paul is probably the biggest deterrent. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I totally get that. It's a weird, it's a weird thing. I remember so many times I would speak and people would come up and, and say they loved it. And they said, where can I hear more of it? And I would say Zen bitch slap. I never see them again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if they heard it in the corridors of AA, it sounded great. If it was from anywhere other than AA, it was fucking a pestilence. <laughs> right, right. I mean, yeah. These are the these are the little quirky things how the head works. Yeah. yeah. Hey Annette, you want to jump in? <laughs> yeah. Hey everybody, glad to be here. Uh, thank you, Paul, as always. And um, the hand is up. I I don't have um, I don't have anything to say, you know, um, but, <laughs> or I'll say, although um, there, there, what I can, what I can find to uh, convey is that sense of finding any excuse, you know, not to put a hand up which is to put a hand out and um but i noticed like today for example like i took time off work for today and tomorrow and um like i just noticed myself on a, a meeting this morning and just i love the parking lots after the meeting you know so like meetings of like 120 something women and then uh like the spontaneity that arises after and um the the sense of you know the eye just uh whatever it's just i don't know i want to say it's not there but obviously it is because and that's that that's what if anything i'm to to speak of and say is that constant now the head is like anything you say 
anything you perceive, you know, fucking full of shit, you know. And um, that's good because now that's how you recognize it by its appearance. But it keeps saying, but that recognition again, it's mine, it's mine, it's mine, it's mine. Oh, you recognize the stubbornness of that. How the stubbornness goes past per personal volition, it's mechanical. Which is, yeah, that's my, I guess, my mechanical response to it. Because right. I, I recognize anything I'm saying is fucking mechanical. It's all right. just, I feel like I've been tricking myself for how many years now? And I'm just so done with it. You know, six but programs, Paul. Six, with you, honey. It's, six it will programs. Be doing it. See, this is the point. This isn't the breaking of its back. This is the first stage. And then you see it. And then you're so frustrated, but then something happens and it's okay for it to inhabit one of these long, small squares in the zoom of your life. Yes. And you come at peace because it's a mechanical activity. It's not a bird singing out your door. It's a, it's a programmed whistle going off. Yes. Yes. So the challenge is, I'll say, is that to find the resonance to be able to, because I feel this need to be able to share it, you know, share whatever, you know, and so it's like, I get, I have the experience of the shooting star. Yeah, I get it. And, and, and then the star is gone. It took my attention over here, wherever, but I don't stay on the star, you know? Well, if you want to share something, yeah. will use you for sure. And uh, there'll be lessons in that. Yes. Yeah. I Oh, so. yeah. you see the great, the great to me, the point of service is the willingness to be used. Now, that's all I can do. Need, that's all I can do. Yeah. Yeah. But the I willingness do. to be used is, uh, doesn't mean you're going to be used. It's the willingness to be used is the state. Yeah. Because I yeah. don't want to be like about me, you know it's so tricky i've been doing it for years you know like well it's going to be you about know? you but you're not that that it's about you really yeah but it's going to be about you self-centeredness sucks every planet into its gravitation that's all but it's mechanical yeah mm -hmm. see yeah. you the becoming the idea of vanquishing it and defeating it like it's you know joe fraser against muhammad ali pay-per-view it's really losing interest in it. Yeah, yeah, that's its death knell. Its irrelevance is what it's scared of the most. It loves to be the obstacle or the thing that's never allowing me to have peace and all this. Don't give it that. It's not It's not that big of a deal, tell you the truth. Yes. I believe it. And I feel like that's what's happening on a, like, I want to say just me, myself, and whatever else is going on here. You know what I mean? Like that that level. But when it comes to conveying it, which it feels like that urge, it's such a claiming of, and, and this all personality comes in and whatever, all this dialogue that, and like you, I know you said, it'll just, yeah, it just takes time. Surrender and everything. that urge then. Take that yeah. to step, you know, surrender that urge. So I have this urge and I'm thinking, I don't know if it's clear or clean or not. Well, mm -hmm. just put it into the recycling of six and seven and see what happens. Yeah. 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 yeah this yeah. is what we do. Uh, we're, we're, this is like traffic. Life is a traffic that goes through us. Yeah. Now we've had one traffic cop and we know what that's about. We've, we've now, a new, another one has been assigned and it's just, it's into the flow of things, yeah? It doesn't want to be another red light or a stop. It's just into the flow. And you'll get used to it over the time, yeah? Because mm -hmm. you're not a, a, an independent, uh, you're like a glass with holes on both sides. Things are moving through. It's not you're a container holding something. Everything is just moving through, yes? And the selfing is moving through and it's part of the larger stream. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It wants to say it's, it's beyond or above all the stream and it's the stream, but it's just part of it. Yeah. And then your ears get 
cleared into hearing different sounds that are much more provoking than the head of the droning of the head. Yeah. And so you start living in a new direction. Yeah. Yet you have the old narration playing. Yeah. And what I what happened here was that old narration recognizing wasn't going to be changed was made a parody of itself. So the mm-hmm. great news broadcast, the great warning signal, the great warning, advance warning thing has been seen like the Daily Show, you know, the parody, <laughs> a parody of a news broadcast. And that's worked for years. It's It's been in it's been comedy central for many many years now. <laughs> and it's it just works on my the stable of stations that are playing here <laughs> i have to say i've been having that experience for a while now and it's like but it's almost it's like the head will use anything like oh this is just our joke no one will get it you know what i mean like just 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 shut up just shut up just get back You're in line <laughs> The show goes on <laughs> with an audience of one, the same show. It's so true. Yeah. The audience, and you're just, yay. This is fucking funny how serious this thing is. <laughs> it is. You know what I mean? Really? You really want to ruin a relationship of 20 years over this? You know, it just it becomes fucking unbelievable. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, it's sort of funny in a lot of ways. Because it doesn't have any guns or swords or knives, it can, it you know, it can threaten you with like a like a chopstick or something. It doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't have its armament like it used to have. You know, it's, it's, it's like a nuclear explosion. It's just like it's all it's all smokescreen. Yeah, it's all yeah. light and mirrors. Yeah, it's yeah. You're on a new basis. Yeah, you have a new attitude and a new outlook. You have a new happiness and a new freedom. Yeah, you are in the state of being reborn. Hallelujah. Fucking finally. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, yes. but it's so true. Finally is is uh, is fucking pretty good than never. <laughs> finally looks really good compared to never. <laughs> so I'm finally free is better than never being free. Yeah. yeah. I mean, look at, there are so many things. I lived in a house that, and my room had a skylight and that skylight dripped and it produced like a humid, weird condition. And I had terrible sinus infections. Yet I never fucking asked the landlord to do anything about it because I didn't think I had any I had any right or deserving of anything because of how bad I'd been most of my life. I put this thing and am I going to go over that constantly? No, it's just part and parcel of life. It's past. And this is I've seen what the bondage of self looks like in a myriad forms. Yeah, where you're not. You are living without permission because you've been bad for years. And so you've got to win over certain rights that should be inalienable. And it's such an insane fucking thing. And I mean, my girlfriend's had a sinus infection and I know exactly what it's like. I lived in that condition for years, pretty much. And in a way, somewhere inside in this crazy situation, it was felt like it was deserved yeah and that i had no right to say anything or change anything yeah woe is me do i want to go in that no i've seen i've been to the depths of the insanity and i've been you know in the stratosphere of relief it's just uh it is what it is and here we are right now yeah i just it just doesn't i mean you cannot believe how you've been fit and sized up by the head. It has put you in a suit that's quite fucking uncomfortable. Yeah. And you keep bitching about, and that discomfort causes you to see things in a weird way. And you believe the outside is producing the discomfort. 
but in fact, you're seeing everything from a discomforting situation. Yeah, we're out to fucking lunch. It's okay. We just, but we, we're we not under that illusion of without knowing it now. We, we've heard a message. See if it takes you where it takes you. And hopefully uh, you'll, found a new, you'll find a newfound freedom in it. Yeah, and uh, that idea of meritocracy and having to, you know, fucking beg for permission to be somewhat okay will be mm-hmm. fucking, that power from that playing God will be taken away. Yes, yes. And the playing God will continue, but it will be powerless in a way. Yes, yeah. So, yeah. This, all of this, all of this happened. There's, do you be, no, bemoan anything? Where is that thing you're bemoaning? It's not here now. Yeah, really, we're all, we're just as naked as when we were born. Every moment, yeah. All the scars you think are carried into every moment. In this moment, those scars aren't have any influence. This moment is fresh and new. Yeah. It's how we greet it, which isn't fresh and new. It's fucking stale and old. Yeah. And this is what AA gives us. Perhaps there's a better way uh, and maybe a new attitude and outlook instead of a revamped attitude and outlook will work. Maybe a new freedom and a happiness instead of the same old freedom and happiness. Yeah. Maybe a whole new, you know, like let's, yeah, no matter how bad it was, you'll see that has value in helping others. Yeah. So I have value helping Amelia through a sinus infection because I'm quite familiar with sinus infections. Yeah. Mm. When she's yeah. flipping out, I'm not flipping out because I know it's going to pass. And why it didn't pass is because she needed antibiotics. She doesn't want antibiotics, but then she takes them and now she starts getting relief. I didn't want to take antibiotics, but I'd have to fucking give up after two weeks and fucking take them. And then it would relieve me of it. But I didn't like to be relieved by antibiotics because like, I don't want antibiotics. Hey, <laughs> that's life. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I, mean, I get them too, by the way, like yeah, chronic, uh, chronically. This is oregano just, oil. Yeah. Oregano oil. Do you use that? Yes, I don't. Yeah. I don't get it anymore, which is awesome. Yeah. This well, is the whole, I, yeah. a lot of things that you wish for without any expectation of happening will happen over time. They mm-hmm. will if you just stay sober. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A lot of shit that was so pronounced, and I was in an active denial of has been changed without me doing much, just keeping the basis of being sober a day at a time opens us up to a huge amount of possibilities that are going to be closed if you get loaded. If you're like me, let's say. Uh, I do believe there are conditions that define the reaction. And if you're a real addict or an alcoholic described in the big book, your reaction to that first drink is going to be different than a heavy drinker. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Your reaction to it could set off a fucking avalanche of shit. And in Mm -hmm. three days, you could be worse than you ever were 30 years ago. Yeah. I I don't identify as an an alcoholic, but there are actions that this, there are certainly it's cascading. If if the first one, is never enough, and then it's just fucking it's it's game oh, off. Are you re- you you're based on that now, and that's clear seeing, yeah. So there's clear seeing about the condition of the action figure, so you don't mess around, you know. I'm not thinking about sugar shooting some powder up in my arm so I can have the relive the ritual of s- syringe use, you know. <laughs> it just doesn't come in up in my head. You know? It's like. That's the beauty of it. I'm not fighting anything. It just doesn't have any oomph. Yeah. Mm. Not, I don't fight shit because nothing comes up with a, like on a heavyweight division. It's just not, it's not like, uh, <laughs> yeah, I know if it appears I'd be knocked out and I'm in a surrendered condition. Yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> uh, you, you got a chopstick uh, if you need one. <laughs> <laughs> the funny thing is 
I was in Italy and we were at this uh, delicatessen re restaurant and there was this super character, Claudio, who ran it. And when I walked in, he put his hand on my shoulder and I just surrendered immediately because I was in a surrendered condition. And I knew he was going to, and he just led me to this chair and started bringing me food. <laughs> and then it ensued a whole event. Yeah. As soon as he touched me, I knew I was a pawn in this chess game called Claudio. <laughs> I just played my role and it was great. It was fantastic. But when he put his hand on my shoulder, there was no resistance to be found to begin with, which is fucking super great. Yeah. I wasn't re I wasn't walking around in resistance to everything. I was open and therefore when he touched my hand, the surrender was the, the next right thing. <laughs> now, did I know I was in a surrendered state? No, I didn't. That's part of a surrendered state. <laughs> You're not interested in knowing your condition. <laughs> you don't have a great... You're not observing 24 hours a day, every day, the condition that you're in. <laughs> You've lost interest in that which checks in to see what condition the condition is in. You've lost interest in that. <laughs> I couldn't do that. I couldn't. It would me be trying to lose interest would be interest in me. But this life of sobriety has brought about these effects. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. So. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Annette. Yep. Thank you, Annette. Uh, anybody else? It's 1130. Any, anybody else got anything? Don't see anything, Paul. All right. Well, let's say Saturday. We're not going to have a meeting, but we may have the Zoom open because we're going to be at a a crazy event called Comic-Con with like a hundred thousand people. So I think it would be interesting if you can, if you want to come in, if I'm available, it'll be open. If it isn't, I'm not, but we're going to try to do it. And uh, we may have a, another zoom at four because we're on a panel and they're go we're going to be talking about addiction and stuff like that. So just drop in if you don't have anything better to do and, if not, maybe we'll record it anyway. So, yeah, but it won't be a regular meeting on Saturday. But everything else is on schedule, yeah. Hey, thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank yeah. you, Annette. Tomas from Poland. We were all surrendered under Claudio. Roman Mueller, <laughs> Rico Cruz, Michael Stacy, Kurt Zimmerman, Axel, <laughs> Mia. Brian C. 2024 AD. Yes. <laughs> now, Brian, you changed the words, the letter C, and put S E E, and now you're getting closer. You're getting closer to the event. Yes. Brian S E E. So we got Lebowski, Walter from the Netherlands, Joseph, France, John, Florida, Mickey in Madeira. Jules on vocals, uh, Mitesh, I think I haven't met her or him, but welcome. Mike M, Saraswati, Phil, I've seen Phil before. Nice to see you again, Phil. Rick Rowe, Miss Volkman, Jason, Ben, Sean, another phone number. Hey, thank you, everyone. I have a... Uh, it has a very uplifting event as the zooms yes it's sort of uh yeah it gives it brings out the colors of things and stuff and if you after a while when you start eating you'll probably taste food more <laughs> yeah your senses can be elevated can you imagine that they can be yeah all right thanks buddy Appreciate Bye -bye. it. Thanks, Paul. Yeah. Kurt, thank you for your love and service, man. Good to oh, see you. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Kurt. Thanks, everybody. Good to see you.